section, I will look at gathering network data on your network. When all is configured correctly and you have good hardware, your user should experience quick response times from your network. However, when things are not working the way they should be, there are some tools to help you work out where the problems may be. In this video, I will first look at the network monitor. Network monitor will allow you to capture and analyze data traveling around your network. When you install network monitor, you will first want to give some thought on where you place network monitor on your network. In order to capture the right data, the data you want to capture must travel through one of the interfaces that Network Monitor has access to. Once I have looked at where to install Network Monitor, I will go through how to install Network Monitor and how to use the graphical interface included with Network Monitor. In some cases, you may want to use the command line for Network Monitor, so I will look at how to do that. Lastly, I will look at Simple Network Monitoring Protocol, or SNMP. SNMP allows your devices to collect statistics that can be analyzed by you. Network Monitor is no longer included in Windows Server 2008 in the base install as it was in previous versions of Windows Server. It is, however, available as a free download from the Microsoft website. In order to use Network Monitor on your computer, you will need to be an administrator on the computer or a member of the local group NetMon Users Group. Network Monitor will allow you to capture and analyze any traffic that comes through your computer. The computer on which you install Network Monitor will depend upon your needs. Consider this network. A client is connected to a server via a hub. In order to capture network data, it would make sense to install the network monitor on the server. Since the network is connected via a hub, and a hub broadcasts data destined for any computer to every other computer connected to the hub, you could capture data from any other client on the network that is connected to that hub. When network monitor is configured to capture traffic that is destined for different computers, it is said to be in a promiscuous mode. In the real world, hubs are old technology, and your network may not have a single one installed. Instead, you are more likely to have switches installed. Switches direct traffic to only the computers that require it. In this example, Server 1 would not see any traffic that is destined to Server 2. The switch would simply work out the port to which Server 2 was connected and send the data down that port. To get around this problem, a lot of modern-day switches allow you to configure a monitor port. A monitor port will be sent a copy of all data that is sent to that switch down a nominated port. With a monitoring port configured, any traffic from Client 1 to Server 2 can also be sent to Server 1. Bear in mind that even with a monitor port configured, you can only capture data that comes to that switch. For example, if your switch is connected to another switch, any data that does not need to travel to the first switch will not be transferred from the second switch. This means that if Network Monitor was connected to the first switch via a monitoring port, you cannot capture any data from the second switch that is not routed through the first switch. For these reasons, it is often important to give some thought for the best place on your network to install Network Monitor so it captures the data you require. If you want to capture data that is going over your WAN links, set up a monitoring port on the switch connected to your WAN devices. If you want to capture client data traveling around the network, attempt to connect the network monitor to a switch that is in the center of your network where most of your traffic will need to travel. If you are only interested in traffic traveling to a particular server, all you need to do is install Network Monitor on the server you want to monitor. Let's have a look at how to install and configure Network Monitor. Previously, Network Monitor was included with the operating system out of the box, but nowadays you need to download it from the Microsoft website and install it. I have already downloaded Network Monitor from the Microsoft website and saved it to my desktop. The install is quite a simple one. 
When I start the install, Setup will ask if I want to install parsers. These will be installed after I press Finish on the last screen of the setup. Once I pass the Welcome and License screen, I will be prompted if I want to use Windows Update to keep Network Monitor up to date. If you select the option, Use Microsoft Update when I check for updates, Network Monitor will be updated when your computer performs Windows Updates. On the next screen, you can choose the type of install. In this case, I will select Custom to show you all the different options. On this screen, you can select the components that you want to install. You can see here that there are three different components you can install. The first being the program. This is required and cannot be switched off. The Component Update System Path will update the system path so that Network Monitor can be run from the command line from any directory. The last option installs the help files and also some filter files you can use with Network Monitor. Filter files allow you to decide which traffic you want to see in Network Monitor. In most cases, you will want to leave all these options on. The option down at the bottom, Install this product for all users, determines whether Network Monitor will be available for only this user or for all users. Moving right along, I can choose to create a desktop shortcut, which I will, and finally install the product. The install is quite fast and does not take long to install. Once the product is installed and I press Finish, Setup will then install some parsers on the system. Parsers analyze data and then display data if they match a certain criteria. They are similar to filters but are a bit more advanced in the way they check for matches in the data. Once Network Monitor is installed, now if I open Windows Explorer and go into the properties for the network, I can then find my network adapter. If I now go into the properties for that network adapter, you can see that a driver has been added called Microsoft Network Monitor 3. In order for Network Monitor to capture data from a system, this network driver must be installed and enabled. This is done by the setup program, and unless someone has changed it, you should be good to go. If I exit out of here and go back to the desktop, I can now run Network Monitor from the desktop shortcut. Down at the bottom left-hand corner, I can select the network adapters from which I want to capture data. Notice that there are two network cards installed on this computer and appear as Local Area Connection and Local Area Connection 2. I also have the option for ISATAP and Teredo Tunneling. If I select my second network adapter, you will also notice that I have the option for P-Mode. P-Mode stands for Promiscuous Mode. When Promiscuous Mode is enabled, Network Monitor will capture data that is not destined for your network card. If you have a wireless network card, this will appear as M-Mode, but essentially does the same thing. Once you have selected which network card or cards you want to monitor, go to the top of the screen and select the option New Capture. This will create a new tab containing all the data captured in that capture session. To start capturing data, press the button Start. In order to have some data to look at, I will run Internet Explorer and then navigate to the Microsoft website. This will transfer some data across the network connection for Network Monitor to capture. If I now close Internet Explorer and go back to Network Monitor, I can stop capturing data by pressing Stop. If I now go over to the left-hand side and select My Traffic, this will show me all the data that was captured coming or going from this computer. Since I selected PIN mode on one of the network adapters, if I select Other Traffic, you will notice that this traffic was not destined for this computer, but the network adapter on this computer still received it. You can see that there was some DHCP traffic and also some ARP traffic. Generally, data displayed in here will be broadcasts, since I am connected to the network via a switch. Under My Traffic, you will also notice that the traffic that was generated by Internet Explorer has been separated from the other traffic. 
Network Monitor automatically separates data from different programs. This makes it a lot easier to analyze the results. However, even from this small capture session, a lot of data has been captured. If you are after something specific, you may want to consider applying a display filter. Microsoft has supplied a lot of predefined filters for you to use. To select one of these filters, select the option Load Filter. In this case, I will select the DNS filter to show DNS related data. Once I press Apply, all I will see is DNS related data. Internet Explorer itself did not create any DNS data. However, if I select My Traffic, you can see the DNS data that was generated by this computer or sent to this computer. If I expand Unknown, you will notice that the data is grouped. These are called conversations, and you can see here the IP addresses of the conversations that were involved. IP addresses are difficult to remember, so you may want to set up some aliases to make it easier. To do this, select the pull-down menu Aliases and select the option Manage Aliases. From here, I can select new aliases and then enter in an IP address and a name for that IP address. In this case, I will enter in the IP address of my DNS server and the name of the DNS server. I can now add and exit out of the aliases section. You will notice that if I select the pull down for aliases that the option for apply has been ticked. Now if I look through the data that has already been captured, this packet had its source IP address changed to DNS Server 1. In the exam, aliases may be referred to as mnemonic host names. You may be thinking, if you are running Network Monitor for long periods of time, that the data captured may become quite large and difficult to work with. You could always apply a capture filter after you have finished capturing data, but a better option is to filter the data out as it is coming in. To do this, I will create a new capture and this time set up a capture filter. To do this, select the option Capture Settings. Here I can select a filter as I did before. However, if you want to be more specific, you can enter in the filter. For example, I will enter in the IP address of this server and then match it only to DHCP related traffic. To make this filter active, press the button Apply. This will also check the filter syntax. If you have made a typo, pressing Apply will alert you to the mistake. If I select the option Save Filter, I can enter in a name for the filter and save it. If I now go back and select the option Load Filter, you can see that the filter I just created is available. If you have a very busy server, it makes sense to filter out what data you don't require Otherwise, your capture files will be huge. As you have seen, the graphic interface for Network Monitor is quite easy to use. However, there is also a command line version. If you run nmcap with a parameter of slash question mark, you will get help information on this tool. There are quite a lot of options. The most common options you may use are network, capture, and file. The parameter network determines from which network connections or connection you want to capture traffic. If you use asterisk, this will capture data from all network cards. You can also enter in the connection name like local area connection or even the network interface card index number. Windows will allocate a number to each connection in order for you to know this number. In a lot of cases, it is easier to use this number. For the captured parameter, you can enter in protocols such as SMB, IDAP, DNS, or DHCP. In fact, for this parameter, you can even enter in any valid statement like the one I used previously in the display filter. Lastly, you can enter in the file name to which you want to save the data. This file can later be opened in Network Monitor. If you need to find the Network Interface Card Index Number, you can do this by running the command nmcap 
with the switch display networks. If I open a command prompt and run the command nmcap with the switch display networks, you can see that local area connection 2 has the index of 3. If I want to run a capture with only the data from local area connection 2, I can run nmcap with the switch network 3. I can then enter in slash capture and in this case I will enter in DNS so DNS traffic will be captured and nothing else. Lastly I will put in slash file to specify the file name. Network Monitor will now capture data from local area connection 2 and filter out any data that is not DNS related and save the output into the file called dns.cap. Once I have finished collecting data, I can press Ctrl C to exit the program. Once saved, the data can be read and analyzed with Network Monitor at any time. Network Monitor is an excellent tool for monitoring traffic traveling around your network. SNMP, or Simple Network Monitoring Protocol, is an open standard that is supported by a lot of devices on the market. It is often used for reporting performance and faults. You could, for example, report on how much traffic is traveling through a device. You could also configure the device to report when a network connection went down. SNMP can also be configured to report on hacking attempts. If, for example, you had a number of incorrect password attempts on a device, you could use SNMP to report on these. SNMP has two components. First, there is SNMP management software. This software collects data from SNMP devices on the network. Windows Server 2008 does not come with any SNMP management software. If you want to use Windows Server 2008 to manage your SNMP devices on your network, you will need to obtain some third-party management software. The second component is the SNMP agent. The SNMP agent runs on the device. The agent is what captures the SNMP data and sends it to the SNMP management software. Windows Server 2008 does not come with SNMP management software. However, it can be set up to use an SNMP agent. Let's have a look at how to configure the SNMP agent on Windows Server 2008. To install the SNMP agent on Windows Server 2008, launch Server Manager. SNMP is a feature of Server Manager, so select Features and then select Add Features. From the Features list, you want to select SNMP Service. There are two options you can install. The first is the SNMP service, which is essentially the agent allowing your SNMP management software access to SNMP data on this service. The second component, SNMP WMI Provider, allows WMI processes to access SNMP data. WMI stands for Windows Management Instruments. WMI is a framework that you can use to manage Windows computers. For example, you could write a Visual Basic script to access WMI to read information from your computer and set configuration settings. WMI acts as an interface to read data about devices on your computer. For example, the size of your hard disk and the speed of your network card. Adding this component allows the WMI interface to access SNMP data. Once I have selected my components and pressed Next, all I need to do is press Install. SNMP services will now be installed. The install is quite fast and should be done in less than a minute on most servers. Once the install is completed, to configure SNMP, I will close Server Manager and run services from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. From the list of services, there are two services that relate to SNMP. The first is SNMP Trap. This is the service that receives SNMP data from another computer. This service is required by third-party SNMP management software 
to operate if it is installed on your server. You only need to worry about this service if you install SNMP management software on this server. If this server is only going to work as an agent to SNMP management software installed on another computer, you do not need to worry about the SNMP trap service. If I select SNMP service, to configure the SNMP agent, right-click and select Properties. You will notice that the service is the same as any other service except that there are two new tabs. These are Agent and Traps. If I select the tab Agent, the first thing you can configure is the contact information and location information. The contact information should be information about who is responsible for support of this server. The location of the device should be the physical location of the server. For example, the device is located in Building 2, Level 6, Conference Room A. The next section has five tick box which determine what the service can access. If you want the SNMP service to access physical devices such as hard disks, you will need to ensure the physical tick box is ticked. If you are running any software on the server that needs to send a message via SNMP, you need to make sure the application's tick box is ticked. The tick box data link and sub network should be ticked if your server is acting as a bridge between networks. A bridge works on layer 2 of the network and usually combines different network types together. A common type of bridge connects wireless to a wired network. If your server is configured as a router, you will need to tick the box Internet to gather SNMP data about the router. The last option, End to End, needs to be ticked if the server is being used as an IP host. Basically, this means you are using the TCP IP protocol. If I now select the Traps tab, to start using SNMP, you need to enter in a community name that the SNMP service will use. Most SNMP devices will be configured by default to use the community public. I can add public here by typing it in and pressing Add to List. You will notice that if I now select the pull-down list, public has been added to that pull-down list. You can add more community names here if you want. In the Trap Destination area, you will need to enter in where the SNMP service will send SNMP collected data. For example, in this case, I could enter in a server that will have SNMP management software installed. If I now select the Security tab, it is a good idea to set some options here to protect your SNMP information from being collected by the wrong person. In the top section, I can enter in the community name public and then set the access level. By default, the access will be read only, but you could also give read and write access. Once you have set the level of access, you can then set the addresses from which this server will accept SNMP packets. By default, the SNMP service will only accept packets from the hosts listed. This host is already configured to send SNMP packets to my server with SNMP management software. If you only want to send statistical information to the server for collection, you do not need to configure any options here. If, however, you want your management software to have some control, you will need to configure the host in here. If security is not a primary concern for you, you can always select the option Accept SNMP packets from any host. That's it. Press OK and the SNMP service is now ready to go. When using Network Monitor, remember, choose the location of where you want to install Network Monitor carefully. If you install Network Monitor in the wrong place, it will not capture the data that you require. By default, Network Monitor will only capture traffic that is destined for your computer, that is, has the same IP address as the computer that has Network Monitor installed. 
If you want to capture all traffic, make sure that you enable Promiscuous Mode. With Promiscuous Mode, Network Monitor will capture all traffic, but remember, it can only capture that traffic that physically travels down the network connection on which Network Monitor is listening. If you are planning on using SNMP on Windows Server 2008, remember that Windows Server 2008 does support SNMP, but you will need third-party tools to analyze any data sent to SNMP. Windows Server 2008 out of the box can only send SNMP data to another computer, which will process it. Remember this fact for the exam. Good luck with your network and keeping it nice and responsive for your end users.